Good morning. Let me, let me say it's a great honor to be able to give the talk this morning because I love this place and I love all you guys. Um, the women aren't here today, in case you knew, because they're on retreat. And so before I delve into my talk, I thought I would give the women who have come here today a little, um, what do you want to call it, a little treat. <laughs> so you've heard of the Moses Code, right? So we're going to delve into... The guy code. <laughs> so how many times a minute do women think about chocolate? <laughs> and so I don't have to tell you what the next one is. <laughs> uh, as far as problems go, we want to fix your problems. <laughs> do we really want to talk about them? And then the age-old question... No, you don't look fat in those jeans. <laughs> I mean, what else would I say, right? Okay, so let me get, let me get down to... Uh, I'm going to show you a secret, okay? I'm giving away this. You know, guys, don't be mad at me. Uh, let's play this little clip that I got for you. You're going to find out a secret from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'll reveal it to you at the end. It's not the whole movie, by the way. It's just a couple minutes. Okay, so I went CSI on, on you guys, and I, I got a screen capture. There we go. So I got a screen capture of the monolith, and people have been arguing for 40 years. What is its true meaning? Well, I'm here to tell you what, what's really gotten to our DNA. So I digitally enhanced this photo, fine-tuned it, and came, and this is what you... <laughs> Intuitively, I want to go up on this thing. It's supposed to go down. So I fine-tuned it, Here's what, here's what I discovered. <laughs> so now you understand, right? So, now on to the topic. Um, a lot of you know my story about how I came to Unity. If not, I just wanted to give you a brief summary. In uh, 96, I went through a, a clinical depression after a separation, and I sort of wanted to sort of show that. And the whole time, I instinctively knew that I was missing a spiritual component of my life. Here I was, almost 40 years old, and I had run from the, the Catholic Church when, basically when I was 10, and, th and therefore I thought I had run away from God also. Fast forward three years to 1999, I'd recovered from my depression. Um, my wife and I gave our marriage uh, another shot, and, but we mutually agreed on ending it in 99. It was at this time I searched out my spiritual path, which I can pinpoint to Delnor Health and Wellness Center Massage Therapy Waiting Room. It was there that I picked up a monthly aspectarian and I saw an ad for a, a, a little radio show that this guy was doing in Elgin, and uh, he was an intuitive from Melrose Park. He was a great guy. He interviewed 
Deepak Chopra, Carolyn Mace, all these powerhouses, and I really got in, this was just what I needed for my spiritual path. I started reading all the books, and in 99 I went to a, a conference at Navy Pier and saw all these people, Carolyn Mays, Marianne Williamson, Gene Houston, Harville Hendricks. Um, it was at the time I had an epiphany. I was talking to Carolyn Mace at a book signing, and I'd seen one of her videos on Channel 11, and there was this one part of it that really, really hit home for me. And, and so I went, up, I went up to her and I said something, and I had no idea what I said because I was just clumsy. <laughs> and then she looked at me like she had no idea what I just said. <laughs> and it was then that I realized that you know, I was kind of following these guys. They were superstars and stuff. It wasn't the people. It was their message. And so I, yeah, I did it again. I found uh, Sonia Coquette, who was, is from this area, and uh, she gave a talk. And I was so impressed. And I went to her website, and I saw her list. She had uh, churches and said Unity Church. And I said, I got to go to a church that someone like this goes to <clears throat> excuse me and so I found the unity and I saw Batavia and so uh, I was here in 99 and as they say the rest is history well I, I, I hope you didn't mind this little trip down memory lane because I think a lot of us have taken some sort of journey to get here and it dawned on me that what to talk about but the five basic principles of unity so I'm not going to read them all yet, but I, I will go through them. I just I thought it was real important to... Okay, sports analogy. You're doing, you know, maybe you're not doing so good in baseball, but, you know, so your coach gets you back to the basics, right? So let's, let's, let's do that. Let's go over the basics. Number one, God is absolute good, everywhere present. Using this first principle, we can change our old way of thinking. For sin, the old way assumes duality, that there is good and bad, right and wrong, according to God through human interpretation. The new way, which is actually an old way, older way, missing the mark, error thinking. Co-founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore, said, we are not punished for our sins, but by our sins. Hell, traditional, traditional uh, view, an actual place to go for punishment when you die. Unity, call it a state of mind, mental or physical. Negativity, out of harmony with source. A couple more. Evil, traditional, caused by Satan. Right? Not my, not my fault. Unity, we say, not connected to source. Last one, how to discover God. Traditional, go to church, listen, obey your priest, minister, follow the church rules. Accept what you are told. Unity. <clears throat> Look within through prayer and meditation. Know God's power is always available. Be open and receptive to God's guidance. John 4.16 So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Joshua 1.1.9 1, 1, I hereby com command you, do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay, on to the second principle. And by the way, there's, there's many, they've modernized the language of these since Charles Fillmore wrote them, so I apologize if, if yours disagrees with mine slightly, but they're all the same. <coughs> Each of us has a spark of divinity within us, and we speak of Christ's spirit within our essence is of God, and therefore we are inherently good. This follows logically from first principle. If God is absolute and God is everywhere present, 